Good afternoon and welcome to this week's edition of Fresno State Focus on Sports. I'm Al Scott. I'm David Victor. And this is Isaiah Caceres, an alumnus of Fresno State Focus, with special insight for today's sports guest. Thank you for coming, Isaiah. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate you guys inviting me. The wait is over and the questions are answered. Fresno State's new men's basketball coach is Vance Wahlberg. The Central Valley native comes from Clovis West High School, where he has coached since 2016. Wahlberg was an assistant coach in the NBA with the Denver Nuggets, the Philadelphia 76ers, and the Sacramento Kings. He also coached at the University of Massachusetts and Pepperdine, where he was the head coach from 2006 to 2008. Wahlberg takes over for a basketball program that has been to the NCAA tournament just once since 2002. What challenges will he face to get this program back to relevancy? David, let's start with you. Well, obviously, there's a lot of challenges that he's going to face. First and foremost, it's getting this team back together. It's because it takes time for a team to actually understand your style of play. But, uh, but other than that, he definitely has the capability to turn this, this team around because he has the experience as an assistant coach in the NBA. He's coached Clovis West High School. He has won a state championship with the Fresno City College basketball team. So there's definitely a lot for him to do, but he's more than capable of getting it done. I think this is going to be a new test for him. He's going to be taking over a roster that only has one regular player from last season, returning Jalen Weaver. He averaged a little over seven points per game last year. Um, everyone else has either graduated or transferred, or they were riding the bench. So he's going to have to recruit, and we'll see if he's able to do that. Now, Isaiah, he, you actually played for him at Clovis West. Um, is that right? Yes, that is right. Uh, in 2018, I was the, the team captain, and we did pretty well that year. Uh, we played against Jalen Green, which was the number two pick in the NBA draft. And Now he's playing for the Rockets. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yep. And he, he's thriving there now. So, uh, But when it comes to Coach Wahlberg, I mean, he's going to – He's going to turn boys into men, basically. He, he has the ability to, to get the best out of his players, and he, uh, he just has a passion for winning like, the, like no other. I've never seen it before in my life. He, he just gives it all at any time. And uh, when it comes to the dribble drive motion offense, that's his bread and butter. He's basically the founding father of it. Uh, it's been in the NBA, NCAA, uh, high school, all around the nation, uh, even across the globe, uh, ranging to all the, all the way to the Philippines. So uh, it's a complex offense, a com complex system. It's going to take about a couple years, two to three years, for you know, the players to finally understand their roles and, uh, and, and thrive in them. But uh, I have a lot of uh, confidence in, in the team and Coach Wahlberg, and starting with a clean slate. So only up from here. <laughs> only up from here, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, last month, the university parted ways with athletic director Terry Toomey. He spent six years at Fresno State. In the interim, the university appointed Rob Acunto to oversee the athletic department while the university holds a nationwide search. Acunto's been here at Fresno State since last year. His first task as the interim AD was in naming Wahlberg as the next head coach for the Fresno State basketball team, as we just mentioned. Whoever takes over as the next AD will have a lot on their plate. Who do you think will be the Fresno State's new athletic director? David, let's start with you. Well, I mean, it's really difficult to pinpoint exactly who might be the person to do that. I mean, we barely hear of any candidates that I know of. It's really, it's, it's pretty soon to kind, of, to kind of jump the gun on that. But it is pretty, oh, boy, I'm looking forward to see what, seeing what's happening during these next several months. Terry Toomey was a great guy, and obviously he did a lot of good for this program, but at some point you have to take results. Obviously with the men's basketball program struggling, with the fallout from Coach Justin Hudson, um, the lack of progress on the Elevate campaign, um, the failure of Measure E, there were a number of reasons that could have attributed to why he was let go, um, so much so that Fresno State is paying him to not be here. I think that says a lot. Now, he was a great guy, but eventually you have to get results. Where they go in that direction to find that new leader of the athletic department, I'm not sure. Obviously, like David said, it's still early in the discussion stages. What do you think they should be looking for in that next AD? I believe that they should be looking for a leader and a motivator. Um, he's going to be you know, around every single sports program, so he's going to have to – you know, create a sense of connection with not only the coaches, but the players as well. Um, so I, uh, I think Fresno State should really take their time and, and find someone with a good quality. 
Fresno State Esports has a chance to make program history this Wednesday. On Wednesday, both League of Legends teams have an opportunity to bring a National Esports Collegiate Conference Championship to the program. Not only is this the program's first time making it to a grand final in League of Legends, but this could be the first time a team can win two championships in the program's five-year history. Central Valley Fuego is having a turbulent start to its season. The team marches 10th with four points in USL League One play after one win, three losses, and no draws after falling 3-2 to the Richmond Kickers on Saturday. Jermaine Jones and the Fuego also fell to amateur side El Farolito in round two of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup last week. Their sole league win was on the road against South Georgia Tormenta and have yet to score a victory at home. Has Jermaine Jones failed to live up to the hype as head coach? Let's start with you, Isaiah. Uh, I do not believe Jermaine Jones has failed to live up to the hype yet. I mean, he hasn't even finished his first season. Uh, he hasn't had the time to develop his players, develop the staff, develop the program. I mean, good things take time. And unfortunately, that's not what he's had so far. So... Uh, I think he just needs to get some time to, to develop this program and, and, and lead us in the right uh, direction. Fresno has had a rocky history with soccer, obviously with the Foxes um, and, you know, the Fuego have been up and down. Fans want to see results, whether it's a soccer legend or not. Jones has to get wins. It's been early, so we'll see, but... Sooner or later, the fans are going to want to see victories, and otherwise, they're going to ask questions. I mean, I totally agree with you. Regardless of whether you're a U.S. men's national soccer team legend or not, it's not the same playing as a player, even if you played in a World Cup and scored a banger goal against Portugal, <laughs> as, than it is, as it is to be a coach on the sideline on telling players what your strategy is. Because I mean, he's come from coaching the youth from the... From coaching youth players in the with the U, with the U.S. Soccer Federation, and he's just let's also face the fact that he's just starting out his career as a head coach. This is his first head coach gig, so but he himself is starting to get, gain some experience. So we'll just have to see what goes forward from here. Coming up, we talk about Fresno State baseball, who extended their lead in the Mountain West this weekend with a big sweep over Nevada. How Fresno State softball got the brooms out as well with a big series against the Aggies. Plus, we talk about the athletic, the Oakland Athletics decision to move to Sacramento and what it means for the future of baseball in Oakland. Here in the valley, our colors are blue and our waves are red. Bulldog born and bulldog bred. Generations linked forever by traditions that have stood the test of time. Inside our stadiums, we are one. This is our valley. And this year, we're doing it for you. At Fresno State, being bold means committing to something greater than yourself. It's learning by doing and nurturing leaders to advance our shared future. It's using research to create a better life for those around us and healing those who need us most. These are our stories. Because at Fresno State, bold begins here. The Fresno State baseball team is on fire in the Mountain West Conference. The Bulldogs secured back-to-back -back sweeps over Mountain West opponents the last couple of weeks. They started strong with a doubleheader on Saturday, winning 9-8. Mountain West Pitcher of the Week, Noah Beal, took over in Game 2, striking out 10 in a career-long eight innings pitched, picking up his third win of the season. Tommy Hoffey hit 643 with five runs scored while driving in four to earn Mount West Player of the Week. The Bulldogs are now 22-9 on the season, including 12-3 in the Mountain West Conference. First place. The Dogs are on a roll. The question I have to ask, are they the favorites to win the Mountain West right now? I would say they've been the favorites since the beginning of the season. And I would have to say that because they have, it's not only because of their pitching, but also because of their batting. We have, two, we have a senior in Tommy Hopfe, who is just an all-around all team leader. And we, we could also say the same for Murph Gray, who coming off of last year as freshman of the year, he is also delivering as a sophomore. So coming off of that momentum, 
from last season near the end of the, well, that was actually picking up to the end of the season. They brought it into this year. So, and, and uh, so they're, they're definitely the favorites to, to be the top of the conference. This has the makings of a very special team. Um, they have that three-headed trio with Jake Dixon, Noah Beal, Jack Anker in the starting rotation. Um, the bullpen has had its issues at times, but they're pretty solid. The offense is what I want to talk about. Eddie Salazar is one of the best leadoff hitters I have seen at Fresno State ever. He gets on base like no other. Coming behind him, he's got Grady Morgan. Rocco Pepe might be winning Mountain West Player of the Year. Uh, you talked about Murph Gray. This offense just has a lot of talent. Um, I don't know about you, Isaiah, but they've, they've, got, they've got a lot of exciting things going on. Yeah, like you guys mentioned, I mean, when it comes to, to baseball, you know, good pitching and great hitting, that's what you need for the keys to success, you know, and that's what, that's what Fresno State has. So uh, moving forward, they just need to put all gas, no breaks, you know, to keep the uh, – just because they're, they're in the lead doesn't mean that it's, you know, set in stone. So they got to they earn this and uh, just stay in good health. They, th- their biggest struggle this year has been on weekday games um, – They've struggled at times. We'll see if they can get that turned around. Um, but good things going for the dogs. Fresno State softball is looking to pick up steam midway through the season. The dogs find themselves in fourth place of the Mountain West after sweeping Utah State in their weekend two-game series. Fresno State defeated the Aggies in a 9-1 to run rule victory on Saturday with first baseman Sophia Medellin and a yin going three for four with three RBIs and a run. Medellin also went 3-4 for four to help the Dogs blank the Aggies 6-0 to zero on Sunday and was named Mountain West Player of the Week. The series win puts softball at 5-4, and four, at 5-4 and four conference record and is running a six-game winning streak. Their next game is a non-conference game at Stanford on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Are the Bulldogs gaining speed on a hot spark, or is this just a fluke? What do you think, Isaiah? I think you just got to ride the hot wave. I mean, so far, you know, you get a few games going well for yourself, and it's just at the perfect timing. So you just, just got to keep riding that momentum. Obviously, Sophia had a big weekend. She's been big all year. Um, the dogs have struggled with consistency. They're looking good right now. Um, I'd like to see that carry over for more than just a week or two. Um, obviously, they had struggles at the beginning of the year, but they're really getting it together now. We'll see if they have the pitching, though, to uh, carry them through the end of the year. What about you, David? Oh, I absolutely agree. I mean, I mean, it is, uh, again, they're halfway through the season. And I don't think it's how you start, it's how you finish. And if they can finish strong, they have a good chance of actually getting within the top three or even taking first place. Big news in Major League Baseball came over the weekend. The Oakland Athletics are temporarily relocating to Sacramento. As part of the team's efforts to move to Las Vegas for the 2028 season, the A's will spend the next three years in Sacramento. Sutter Health Park has been home to the Sacramento River Cats, the San Francisco Giants AAA team. Now the ballpark will be playing host to 81 Major League Baseball games a year with just 14,000 seats available to fans. This means the 2024 year will be the last season of Major League Baseball in Oakland where the A's have spent the last 52 seasons. Despite playing in Sacramento, the A's will be referred to as just the A's or the Athletics without a city name in the title. This move has to come as a gut punch to A's fans who have supported the team throughout decade after decade through thick and thin. David, you grew up in Oakland. What is it like, you know, being there and rooting on a team for an owner that simply does not care? Honestly, it's very frustrating because, I mean... I have to admit it, I'm not a big baseball fan growing up, but this team was part of the community. I actually have a cousin who lives within about a mile or so of the stadium. There's a, there's a little neighborhood east of the Coliseum, and so whenever the A's would pick up a victory, we'd hear the fireworks outside. Unfortunately, that's not going to be a possibility within the next coming years, and so it's just very frustrating to see how the, all the bad decisions from the owner have really affected this team to the point of the fans abandoning abandoning them. I mean, there's really no point in rooting for them if you know they're leaving now. And what about you guys yet? Could you imagine going to a baseball game and, you know, you got Aaron Judge coming to town, but there's only 14,000 seats available. 
Yeah, man. I mean, it's it's just absolutely depressing for the, the city of Oakland and, and the fans of Oakland. I mean, first first the Warriors leave, then the Raiders. Now you have the A's. Uh, it's just it's just rock bottom. So the only thing about rock bottom, you can only go up from here. So we'll, we'll see how the A's go up. Goes. That's the theme of our show today. <laughs> exactly. Minor League Baseball is back in Fresno. The Fresno Grizzlies host Inland Empire this week for a six-game series beginning tomorrow night at 6.50. The Grizzlies began their season in San, Di- in San Jose over the weekend, taking all three games against the Giants. What are you guys looking forward to this season? I mean, as far as baseball goes, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not really, a, like I said, not a big baseball fan. I don't usually go out to see the Grizzlies, but I am, but, but when it comes to, but who's not excited to see a good home run? Let's be honest with you. Love, love excitement and home runs. I, I look forward to the concession stands, you know, going out to Chansey Park, eating a pretzel, drinking a soda. A good time. Yeah, it doesn't get better than that, man. I mean, especially in spring. So um, it always has a great atmosphere in, Chich- in Chich- Chich- Chansey Park. So the uh, Grizzlies are a good team, though, too. Yeah. One of the best teams in all of minor league baseball last season. Do not sleep on the Grizzlies. <laughs> there you go. And that's it for this week. Thanks for inviting me, you guys. Remember, we will keep you updated on our regular newscast this Wednesday at 4 o'clock. As for this broadcast, we will see you next Monday. Thank you for joining us. This has been Fresno State's Focus on Sports. I'm Al Scott. I'm David Victor. And I'm Isaiah Casares. Thanks for watching.